76, how he lives. Oh, 
1953, what a meeting in the air.
Bible singing today, would you turn please in your copy of the Word of God to Mark's Gospel, chapter 7. I, I, I enjoy all the Bible. And uh, I get in on a passage of Scripture and I say, boy, this, this is so good. This is my favorite. Yeah. And about Thursday, when I said to the Lord, Lord, you know, Sunday's coming up. And uh, you hadn't dealt in my heart very strong yet. And then, boy, he, he knocked me over. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, we're going to cover some things this morning. Yeah. And if you'll be open to the Holy Spirit, I, I want to I tell you, it's going to change your worship. Mm. I want to tell you, it'll, it'll change Bethlehem Baptist Church if you can hear it. God help me. Would, would you just in your heart right now say, God, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, let's pick up our reading in uh, uh, verse 31. Mark 7. Now one of the things you can appreciate about Mark is he didn't go by his first name. He was John Mark. I tell people my first name, they don't even have any idea who I am. Uh, the only people that know my first name is the internal revenue, the revenue service, and uh, different ones, <laughs> uh, our insurance, <laughs> and uh, I don't even uh, I don't even say yes to my first name because I've never used it. But anyway, uh, John Mark, and he goes by Mark. I, I like John Mark. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what he'll do. If the going gets rough, he'll quit. Yeah. 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 Uh, if he hadn't been raised by a widow Christian mother, he might not have ever made it. Yeah. <laughs> but his mother instilled spiritual principles. Yeah. And again, departing from the coast of Thyra and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. You say it for me. I can say it good at home. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, having an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and he put a finger into his ear. He spit and touched his tongue, and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the strings of his tongue were loosed, and he spake plainly. And he charged them that they should tell no man. And he told them, don't say anything about this. But the more he charged them, please don't say anything about this. Please don't mention this. That's unusual. Isn't it? The respond to the people. So much the more, a great deal, they published. Yeah. Mm. And we're on beyond measure, astonished, saying, now here's the text, but we'll not use it. Greg, you boys preach this. He hath done all things well. That, yeah. That's the thought of it. Hey, Boy, you, you can go right there. Yeah. Everything you've done, you did it well. Yeah. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Could we pray? Father, the enemy will try to make my tongue be stammering. He will approach me this morning in my thought pattern. He will do everything he possibly can for this waiting congregation and myself not to hear what the Holy Spirit of God wants us to hear. But Father, you're greater than all the satanic power that the devil has. So, Father, in my feeble, unlearned way, I'm trying to commit myself this morning into your hands to be used of you to magnify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And we welcome your Holy Spirit that is the greatest authority and power. God on planet Earth. And Lord, I would pray that he would move in all of our hearts this morning in a very special way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You can put our text on the wall. What Jesus ask us not to do is exactly what we do. Yes. That, that's the theme right there. Yes. And straightway. And he charged them, don't say anything about this. Yep. Keep, keep your mouth shut. And the more he asked them not to do that, the text said the more they did it. Yeah. Adam, what's going on? But, but this fruit in the midst of the garden, I, I've already been informed that it looks good. And, and I've already been informed that it tastes good. Mm -hmm. Come on. And whatever the Lord asked the first Adam not to do is exactly what he did. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. You. you was raised in a home, wasn't you? You, you was either adopted, you had parents, etc., etc. Oh, I, I remember when I was a kid. Everything that my mother and daddy told me not to do, yeah. you can mark it down. All within me wanted to do it. That's right. And I did do some of it. That's right. And I got in serious trouble when I got on the old farm mall tractor that you had to crank to start it, that my daddy parked it on a steep hill in behind our house with tricycle wheels in front mm -hmm. so he could get on it, push the clutch down, let it roll off the hill and start it. And son, don't ever let me catch you on that tractor. Right. Don't you get on that tractor. I've always loved tractors. Yeah. And one day, I got on the tractor. Mm -hmm. I did exactly what my daddy told me not to do. Yeah. Your parents here, you're raising children. Right. Isn't it amazing how they have a deaf ear? Yeah. Right. We tell them, no, no, don't do that. In spite of everything we say, they do it anyway. Right. Right. Jesse, I don't know how I done it as a five-year-old boy. I don't know if I pushed the clutch down. I don't know if I jerked the gear lever out of gear. I don't know, but me and that tractor went off that steep hill all the way to the bottom. Yeah. Boy, it was fun. It was exciting. I drove the tractor. But it was obvious when my daddy come in that I had got on the tractor. And in that occasion, he made the blood run out of my legs when he whipped me. I want to tell you, if that same tractor was on that hill, I'm 73 years old. I will not get on that track. I learned my lesson well. Oh, thank God for a mother's love. I remember my mother, after my daddy wore me out, she grabbed me up in her arms. She hugged me. She kissed me. She cried. She said, Faye Hicks, don't you ever whip this child the way you whipped him this time. And then she said, Frank, that tractor with the tricycle wheels in front of it, son, it could have easily turned over and kill you. And boy, I felt the love of my mother. She was glad I was all right. Yeah. Through chapter 7, in Mark's gospel, they are a theme 
all the way through this chapter. If God says it, let's do it. Amen. Yes. Let's do not do what he asked us not to do. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. Now notice this authority. These scribes and these Pharisees came from Jerusalem to check in on Jesus and the ministry of the apostles. Mm -hmm. So they're watching him. They're watching them very close. And they notice that his disciples eat some food and didn't wash their hands. Mm -hmm. They are very upset for the Pharisees and all the Jews expect they washed their hands off. They didn't eat anything, holding the tradition of the elders. Notice it was a tradition of the elders. And when they came from the market, even the food that they bought in the market, they had a traditional wash that they did with the food. Mm -hmm. Notice also in this passage of scripture, they had vessels that they used to cook with, etc., etc., and they kept these vessels washed and clean. Mm -hmm. Boy, they were doing good, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat the bread with unwashing hands, Jesus? Now why, why is your followers not keeping the tradition of men? Why aren't you keeping it? He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied to you? Now, ye scribes, ye Pharisees, Isaiah had a word for you. Mm -hmm. The word is you're hypocrites. Mm -hmm. You're doing Come on. something that I did not command you to do. Yep. You are doing something by the tradition of man, and you're doing the opposite of what I commanded you to do. Mm. You're yes. messed up. Yes. You're messed up in your thinking, in your heart. This people honored me with their lips but their hearts are far mm -hmm. from me. Yes. Now what they did is they kept tradition and commandments that men had added to God's commandments and they did not keep the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. they did the tradition of men. Right. They did not do what God told them to do. They did the opposite of what God told them to do by the tradition of men. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I watched us again this morning. Right. I listened to us very closely this morning. It's very convenient for us to fall into the tradition of men yes. that has nothing to do with the commandments of God and instead of obeying what God said, then we do the opposite of what God said. But, Are you ready for this? Jesus said, if you do the tradition of men 
and you do not obey the commandments of God, your worship is vain. Mm. That means there's nothing in it. Yeah. Now, you, boy, I'm polished in this. Yeah. I, I, I want to tell you, I, I failed in all the commandments. I want to tell you, I'm guilty of every one of them. Right. But I want to tell you, I can sure go to see on some things that I've been taught right. as the tradition of men, and I can put you into legalism yes. over some of the things I've been taught and some of my own thinking yes. that can drive you to bondage instead of you enjoying the freedom that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And I can easily do that this morning because I have strong convictions right. on particular things yeah. and fail keeping the commandments of God. God help us. Amen. Yes. Yeah, there are a few shaking our head. Yes. Most of you won't, you won't hear this. You, you're, you're so tied up in this. Yes. You're so bound in this. You do this ritual week after week after week and it's all in vain because it's all made of man Bless. and not of God. Yes. Bless you. How many commandments do you keep this week? Mm -hmm. did, you, did, did you even try to keep them? <laughs> or did you try to live by your own thinking? Yeah. yeah. Instead of living by the way that he asked you to live. Yes, I was a place for business. I was having a little fun. I exaggerated in a little story I told. As quick as I exaggerated just a little in that story. Boy, I covered up good, don't you? Yeah. The Holy Spirit in a few minutes spoke to me and said, Now, Frank, don't, don't be that. Yeah, I know you was having fun. Let's all listen to you. But, son, it's a sin to lie. Yes, help me, Lord. But all the things I have by tradition of men, I want to tell you, I kept them this week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, I mean, it's good. I don't do this, and I don't do, boy, I don't touch. I want to tell you something. I'm going to wash my hands before I eat now. <laughs> yeah. Bring them vessels out here. Let's, let's get them clean now before we eat. Yeah. And Jesus said, you didn't do what I ask you to do. Mm. And he said, your problem is not an outward problem. problem. Yeah. Your problem is a heart problem. Amen. It's in your heart. That's why you covet. That's why you murder. That's why you lie. Because it is a heart condition. Yes. And that's the thing of this passage. Yeah. A scripture. And then we get to the text that I read to you. Notice these people had found a man that couldn't hear. And his speech was very stammering. He couldn't talk well because he probably couldn't heal well. The capitalists, remember that word. Have you ever heard it before? It's amazing that a few weeks ago, I preached on legion. You know, when Jesus cleaned him up, clothed him, and gave him his right mind, right. he wanted to go into this particular area? No. He wanted to go with Jesus. Right. And Jesus said, you can't hope. go with me. But you can go home in this particular area. You can go there and you can show your family and you can show the people in that area how I had mercy and grace on you. Mm. In most cases, according to Bible scholars, Legion now clothed in his right mind went through this area telling people what Jesus did for him. Mm -hmm. And they found this man that's heard what Jesus did for Legion, and they know if they can get this man that cannot hear and doesn't speak well, if they can get him to Jesus, 
that Jesus can help him. Right. One of the most powerful witnesses that's ever been shared with other people is the witness of a changed life. Amen. It's so effective, isn't it? Right. The cripple at the gate got up and he walked. And the crowd said, who done this? He was changed. He was walking. Buck, I could not help but think of you this morning and then this week as I read this passage of Scripture. Here, here, here's Buck, a construction worker, has, has a good job, has a good position. But he has an alcohol problem. The alcohol is uh, controlling his life. Not only that, he's hooked with the nicotine, another drug mm -hmm. that he's putting in his body. But through your witness and through you inviting, Kelly came first and then later on Buck came. What an effective witness they have in Bethlehem Baptist Church. Right. But don't drink anymore. He doesn't touch it anymore. Even when he's tempted to, he don't. Mm. He goes on a mission trip and throws his cigarettes down and quits burning tobacco, but's burning with the Holy Spirit in his Amen. heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They, no doubt, no doubt, they've seen legion. Yeah. He's clothed. He's in his right mind now. Yeah. And Legion's telling everybody through that area what Jesus did for him. Mm. It is the authority. It is the power of the work of Jesus, of a changed heart and a changed life that will be effective in Bethlehem Baptist Church yes. that the only explanation that we're changed it's because we met the Lord Jesus That's Christ. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Amen. Now, why a lot of you have never changed is because you've never met the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Oh, you've heard of that. Right. You've even heard the tradition of men about it. Yes. I want to tell you, you in your own power have cleaned up some. Yes. I mean, you're washing your food. Yeah. You're keeping tradition of men. Why you don't enjoy worship is because your heart is not right with Jesus Amen. Christ, folks. Right. And you can come here every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I mean, you can put on one more show. But your heart is dirty. My prayer to God is for everybody hearing under the sound of my voice to know when you leave this beautiful sanctuary in a few minutes that in your spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, mm. is living reality in your heart and in your life. Do you know that? But, 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 but we give all we give all tradition. Well, I went to oh, but I went. I cried. Oh, I went. I felt, I felt so good. Oh, oh yeah. I went. My grandmother told me to go. Oh yeah. I went. They talked to me. Die in that, and you'll go to hell, folks. It wouldn't have these people wouldn't good people. They were good people. They left Jerusalem, folks. They was the polish of their day. Yes, bless him. But Jesus said, why don't you keep the Ten Commandments? Why are you keeping all these other commandments mm. yeah. that are man-made yeah. that has nothing to do spiritually? So they bring this old boy to Jesus. It's amazing. It, it just knocks me over how he does the miracle. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Yeah. But he couldn't hear. Now, now Jesus pulls him aside. Yeah. 
he, he, he doesn't make a public show out of this. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not his purpose. He, he is really acting in the will of God upon the request of others. You ever seen some MTV preachers? Put them in the line. I can't hear. Can you hear now? Say, baby. Mm. Oh, God help. Yeah. Oh, folks, we're so easily deceived. Yeah. We're so easily deceived. I told you Wednesday, Wednesday night about Benny Hinn when he, when he was interviewed. The one man that came up was crippled, walking on crutches and went through the line, and they took the crutches away from him. And now he took two or three steps. They interviewed him. The next morning, he couldn't get out of the bed because they kept his crutches. And when they interviewed Benny Hinn about it, he said, oh, that, that faith that healed him last night, he has to keep that faith going the next morning. No, no, no. When Jesus heals, you'll be healed the next morning. This old boy, Jesus, put his fingers in his ears and he opened his ears. Yeah. yeah. Gross, isn't it? Yeah. He took a little spit and put in the mouth of a man mm. that his tongue was bound and he couldn't talk. And it loosened his tongue. Amen. It's, it's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, just gets, it, it just gets me. Oh, for you scholars, let, let me ask you something. Why in the ministry of Jesus sometimes when he did something that he would say, don't tell anybody? I, I mean, I mean, you would think you you would think he'd want everybody to know. Come you? on. <laughs> could, could, oh, oh, I don't know for sure. You might not. I put that. I, I don't know for sure, but it great. He is one hundred percent man. Yes, right. He, Randy, he is one hundred percent God. Oh, he cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He is God. That's right. God can't forsake him. That had to be a cry in the realm of his humanity. Right. Could, it, could it just be then, Jesse, that he has fooled around with people that he's kind of getting, I don't know how to word it. I, I've had enough for this day. I, I, I need to get in the mountains and pray. I need to go talk with God now. Yeah. I, I got a dear preacher friend. I, I want to tell you, he's a, he's a very close friend. He's been at this church a long time. I noticed months ago, he, Greg, he's isolating himself. Is, is he just wanting to get away? Is he? I said, I've been missing you. Well, he said, Frank, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I've burnt out. Mm, he said, I've dealt with them. I've dealt with yeah. them. I've preached to them. I've talked to them. I'm about fed up. I'm about burnt. Well, Jesus couldn't get burnt out, but don't forget he's all human. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, after all, <laughs> he might say, don't tell anybody about this one. Because he knew the perfect will of God. Yes. And if he didn't do that, we're doomed. Yes. So don't 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 say anything about it. Just just keep quiet. And our thought is, whatever Jesus tells us not to do is what we end up doing most of the time. They had the commandments, they knew what to do. But that wasn't what they wanted to do. So they just went around telling everybody what he'd done. They just published it to much more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were so astonished at what he did that they did say about Jesus, Whatever he does, he does well. He does it well. Yeah. Yeah. He does it well. Because this old boy now can hear and he can speak. Because Jesus 
heal me. Yeah. I'm so touched. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Wednesday night, the, the things I said to you, so, so personally, I'm, I'm so touched. I'm, I'm, I'm touched. I'm, uh, I, I feel, I feel, because I see the respond of, of people that's been in our church for a long time, I, I see their respond. And, uh, and I, I go to bed and I get up, poor, poor have I failed these people. Where did I go wrong? I, I, I'm, I'm here with the responsibility to preach and teach to you the Word of God. Now, I cannot make you perform it. Right. Yeah, but, but I'm here to warn you in a way that you should take heed. Right. You, you, you should know the difference, folks, <coughs> in darkness and light. Yeah, man. Steve, your teaching this morning it was so excellent, so great. I want to tell you, my heart was so moved. When Isaiah prophesied of how God was going to deal with his chosen people. But there's a little phrase in there, Steve, that you read to us. The light never did go out. <laughs> it never did go out. I mean, it's gross and awful, terrible. The light never did go out. So here's what bothers me. It really bothers me. When we have young people. Now, now folks, now again, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, you, you're not training them in the home now. That's, that's going to be the bottom line now. Yeah. Even if I've flunked out, if, if, you, if you've done it in the home, that's right. I'm going to tell you, I can flunk out and them kids are still making it. That's right. But now when they can leave this place and go to a church that teaches false doctrine and don't know the difference, I'm going to tell you, I, I've got a, I've got a heavy heart this morning. I want to tell you I'm I'm loaded down. And and folks, I'm going to tell you something. When we put people in position at this church to be leaders, and they show no interest, none whatsoever, yeah. in leadership and in their family, I want to tell you I can't help it. Yeah, help us, Father. I have a problem. Yeah. Where have I failed you? Yeah. Where, 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 where have I went wrong? I've I've been here a long time, folks. You should know better. Yeah, help us. If you keep the commandments of God, you'll love Him with all your mind, soul, and body. Yeah. I want to tell you, you'll be working where you're a member at. Yeah. You'll be involved. Yeah. You can have a title and do nothing. Right. I've had them to come forward and say, I, I'm, I'm resigned. Had a young preacher boy, he started out here. But he come to me, he said, Frank, I failed. He said, I got all caught up in it. I just failed. <laughs> we didn't get on his case, get down on him. We admired him because he was honest. Hey, if you've missed it, just be honest about it. Right. We've all missed it. Sure. I don't want that position. I don't need that position. Yeah. And throw the towel in, in that position. That still don't mean you can't serve God. Right. Just mean you probably doing something by the tradition and what man requests instead of God for yeah, you. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. preacher, preacher. Bless, man. Thank you, Lord. Mm. God help us. Yeah. Lord help us. Your wife is part of you. Yeah. She's showing some of what goes on in your Home, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God help us. Yeah. What Jesus does, He does well. Yeah. He does well. But the tradition of men will kill you. Yeah. Right. And your worship is nothing but vanity. Right. I don't care if you're the best preacher and singer in the church. Right. If your heart ain't in it, something wrong. Something Amen. wrong. Let's stand together.